Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco, California for Google Next, Google Cloud Next. This is the cloud show for Google, all the actions around AI. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE with Rob Strecce, Dustin Kirkland, our new CUBE analyst, Lisa Martin. We're all here for two and a half days of getting all the data and sharing that with you here in theCUBE. Of course, a lot of action in the cloud, Google introducing some killer new things, but more importantly, it's a roadmap for where they are taking the future. We're here with Lisa O'Malley, Senior Director of Product Management for AI for Google Cloud. Lisa, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So your baby search, the AI search, but you got the AI conversation run Vertex, Vertex AI, the hot product. Yep. Um, it's the, the model garden, right? The, gar the what do they call it? Model, model Vertex garden. model garden, I call yes. it the open garden, <laughs> one more open source in there. Uh, Warren and I will talk about that later. Yeah. You got really amazing innovations. I love the embeddings that are going on with vector databases. Yep. You got extensions, you got connectors, you got conversations. Vertex is quite the set piece of the show. Yes. I mean, it's pretty impressive. What's the, what, what is Vertex AI happening? What's going on with the news here? Take a quick minute to explain. Yeah, so let me, uh, dive into sort of some aspects of Vertex. We want to be able to meet developers where they are. They can be machine learning experts or they can be novices. And we have a suite of um, tools within Vertex that enables all of them. At the bottom layer, uh, you have the foundation models and you'll talk to Warren about uh, Vertex AI and model gardens um, where uh, developers can really get their hands dirty and use the models directly. Uh, one step up from that, a layer of abstraction up from that is our Vertex AI search and Vertex AI conversation. You may remember we referred to them as Gen App Builder in the past, but, but we've brought them in under the, the Vertex umbrella. Um, and what they do is they bring the power of Google search um, and the ability to create chatbots and voice bots uh, into the hands of developers. What's different about the chatbots and the search now? I mean, I, you know, conversational AI has been around for a while, you've seen some startups yep. flame out, some succeed, get sold. But it's, this isn't your yesterday's chatbot. There's lots changed. What's the most important difference people should know about around this new game-changing search and chatbot? It's not yeah. just, hello, give me your customer support. It's, it's, it's deeper. It, it's much deeper than that. So first you start with search, and search enables you to, uh, to search across your websites, your internal data, uh, structured data, unstructured data, your applications, and so it enables you to, to help both employees and customers find what they need. Built on top of that, our search, our uh, chatbots and voice bots enable you to interact with that data in a really natural way across multiple languages. Um, you may have seen uh, in in our uh, consumer search product, you see this generative search experience where now you have this ability to have a multi-turn conversation and to summarize uh, the findings of the search. And so that can happen either in a search bar or in a yeah. chat interface. And so it's really a much more natural and intuitive um, uh, experience. Um, What's changed on the uh, technology? Is it more uh, reasoning? Is it, is, it, is, the, is it leveraging some of the models on Google? What's the underpinnings on the updates on Vertex AI search? Yeah, so on the search side, we've been using large language models for a long time. So, uh, semantic search and semantic understanding um, are yeah. uh, large language models. <laughs> Google search is, hello. You know, the technology we use for retrieval, yeah. ranking, snippeting, uh, you know, how do we present the search results back? All of that has been using large language models for a while. Now we're making it available to enterprises on their data. So whether whether that's an externally facing website for their customers, an external chatbot, or tools internally to enable their knowledge workers uh, to use all of the data that they can have at their fingertips much more easily now. Yeah, so one of the things, and we kind of riffed on this a little bit before coming on set here, but one of the things that's always top of mind for enterprises is security and data privacy. Yeah. How, how are you addressing that with those customers? So, um, in a couple of ways. So first of all, you know, within GCP, your data is your data. We never use your data to train a model. We never use your customer data uh, to, to anywhere else in Google or in GCP. Um, so that's sort of baseline foundation. Um, we also, most customers want to be able to use the world knowledge that the, the model was trained on, but also their own enterprise data. And so we enable what we call grounding. So grounding enables you to make sure that the answers that you're providing to your customers or your internal employees is grounded in the fact base of your, your enterprise corpus of data. 
Um, we're also actually experimenting with grounding on real-time search with the technology that our search organization uses as well. And uh, then lastly, I'll touch on our commitment to, to uh, privacy, security, data governance, and what we call our AI responsibility principles. Um, and we really take these very seriously. So the grounding is where you guys manage the risk around data leaking into the found public models or how to interface with public models with proprietary data, is that kind of the? So actually slightly different from okay. that. So the, the, there's two parts in your question. So we don't allow uh, enterprises data or enterprises customers data to touch the models. You use a, a, a replica of the model and you can train that based yep. on your data and that always stays in your tenant within cloud. Separately, grounding enables you to um, check that the answer that you're giving <laughs> is based on yeah. the data within your enterprise corpus. Yeah. Um, so it enables the, um, the model to, to use your data to answer the, to answer so, the so question. So that's a risk mitigation factor it for is. the enterprise. It is a risk mitigation factor for the enterprise and you can actually play with that and allow you know, no creativity at all, make sure the answer <laughs> is always within our data, or you can enable some creativity for generative tasks like making a new email, uh, building a new slide deck, got making a, new marketing materials. I got a dirty look the other day last night when I said, oh, you can lock it down. They're like, no, don't say that word. It's yeah. not, nothing's locked yeah. down. Yeah. It's yeah. open. Again, eight data is open. That's the beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. So and we got to watch also, ourselves. But it also helps, I mean, we, we talk about it with our AI that we have, that it really is a corpus of jargon. And so this helps with that, that grounding, right? Yes. So if I'm a, you know, I describe, I'm using it for financial AI, and I want, or for legal, yep. my company has certain jargon that they use, it becomes part of that grounding. It does, and so you can train the model, you can train the model in different ways, you can train it with, you know, prompting, you can fine tune it, you can also just use search to uh, to make sure that you're searching on your own corpus of data and it will pick up your style. Uh, and you noticed probably in the keynote today, now even with Imogen, you can use um, style tuning for images as well based on your own corporate style guide. You know, one of the things we were talking about before you came on, it, and I wanted to ask you is because you see su successes like Langchain out there, other companies. Training is really hard to do all the time on data and to get the AI ready for people to use. So people are using these extensions. You guys, you guys have extensions. Yeah. It's a great way to kind of keep current and allow people to work with data without compromising policy exactly. and compliance. This is a huge deal. I mean, what I just said sounds very nuanced, but it's like, that's a huge deal. Yes. Explain why this is so important. So extensions are really game changing. And the reason is, is because now not only can you um, answer questions or have a conversation about the data, you can actually take action within your corporate environment. So for example, I might as an employee search and say, you know, how many vacation days do I have left? I see that I have 16. Great, let me book a day off through Workday Extension um, right there in my chat experience. Uh, and so it allows you to uh, interact yeah. with many systems as long as people are you know, building to the framework. And the alternative, the old way was the data for HR was restricted for certain employees. You have to get someone to administer access, create a data set, deploy it. Yeah. I mean, like how? Or Slow. worse, or, or, or worse like, replicate it and have to build the models and replicate, oh, right. I mean. And, and worse again, when you were building that chatbot, you needed to uh, define every step of that pathway. And now with simple language, you can describe what's the flow that I want to create and our chatbot can create it for you and allow, allow lots of different paths. I've always said this on theCUBE and I've always been waiting for someone to do this. I think, because we live the media business all the time, we're real time, we like to get the data out there as fast as possible, yeah. surface the truth, get the right experts. All the personalization and recommendation engines in the past have always been old school, like web-based stuff. And so, the question for you, this seems like a game changer in the sense that you can bring personalization. I mean, I could, you could literally roll your own anything with, with, with uh, search and chatbot yep. and build that in 
and not have it to be yesterday's recommendation engine or... Correct. I mean, talk about the personalization. Did I get that right or what? Yeah, so, um, so search and recommendations can be personalized now more than ever. You can have real-time data flowing in, user data. We can use that data to anticipate what your user might want next or might want to do next. Um, that can be for internal users and for external users. So it really is, you're right, quite game-changing. Okay, so I want this really bad. How do I get involved? What do I do? I download something? Do I sign up? So, is it in beta? What's available? Give us the, yeah, give us the coordinates. Yeah, so we it's, announced this, it's, this week that um, both uh, Vertex AI Search and Vertex AI Conversation yeah. are uh, fully GA, so available to anyone. You can, uh, as long as you have a GCP account, you can sign up for access to Vertex uh, and get access to them. Now, we do have a lot of more exciting uh, things coming in preview and experimental, and those have uh, have you know specific lists associated with and them. And that's that's really more cust design partners that come in that you guys agree to work yeah. with. We and never build we never build products in isolation. We always build them with yeah. design partners, and that helps us to build yeah. better products. And that makes total sense. Uh, just quick question on your industry perspective, as someone who's been in the industry for a while, how would you describe the pace of change right now in terms of the speed and the velocity? It's pretty massive. It's pretty mind-blowing, I have to say. I don't think I've drawn breath since last October <laughs> or November. Um, and things are changing all the time. You know, every time we talk to a customer, we learn something new. Um, and that's multiple times, multiple days a week. Um, and even just the uh, ability to synthesize all of the incoming information and what's coming from our, uh, our you know, strong technology and research teams and put it into a format that makes sense to customers has been an amazing opportunity, but very fast paced. Has that change how you do product management uh, internally? Um, you don't have to give away any secrets, but I'm sure it probably you know, you got it, probably got some AI assistance on the uh, inside the Google Plex over there. So, <laughs> so yes, we, we use a lot of AI-based tools for you know for uh, for generative purposes. But you got to shorten the cycles. You got to get stuff out. I mean, we have shortened cycles dramatically. The humans can only go so fast before collapsing. Yep. So what do you change? What's changed for you in terms of? So I think you know what's changed is a, uh, a very significant level of uh, internal collaboration across all of GCP. There's a very clear goal and how do we get to the point that our customers need us to get to quickly with a lot of um, yeah. collaboration. Yeah, I, I think what I loved, and just circling back to the extensions, was yeah. the announcement with the ecosystem. And I, I think this is a place where Google sometimes has not done a ton with this, but mm -hmm. the, what's really exciting is Elastian with Confluence and Jira and then Salesforce, and having, letting the data stay there and being able to use it in there, yeah. in the models, and be able to go and be able to build on top of that. Being a product person myself, you know, product background, using Jira and Confluence where you're documenting things and you have such a corpus of data in those for building out programs for building the next gen. Are you yeah. seeing, is that where customers are pu pushing you with this? Yeah, so we're, customers are really looking for productivity and productivity is, um, is slow when people have to go search for information. And it's in you know, the Jira's, the Confluence, the Salesforce, the SharePoints uh, of the world. And so they want to be able to bring all of that into one place and search really quickly and easily across it. And then you know, have an interactive experience, multi-turn search, multimodal search across that data in all of its various formats. And so our connectors enable them to bring that data yeah. in and then to take action on that data. I think the integrations between apps uh, with Duet, seeing some of the demos, I can imagine there's going to be a lot of under the covers, yeah. details around dealing with data integration. Yep. Data integration, and you know, that's the strength of Google Cloud when you look at tools yeah. like BigQuery and Vertex connectivity with BigQuery is going to be um, you know, really, really important going and forward. And you must view multi-cloud or the super cloud idea as you just search and cross environments, just another API, yes. connective tissue. Yep. No issue there, just all same game. So as you said, there's a lot going on under the covers, <laughs> and so we, you know, it, it's not that it's easy to do, but it needs to be done. Lisa, great to have you on. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Final question uh, for me, my, my, Rob might have another one, but what's next? Um, because you, you run it hard. I mean, obviously, you know, chatbots I think it gets oversimplified, but there's a lot going on with that personalization. Yep. The, the, the augmentation of humans and data coming together. What's next for Vertex? If you had to kind of throw a little directional roadmap out there, what should people know about Vertex AI's direction? 
You know, I think there's probably a cert, uh, you know, certain areas that you'll see us continue to develop on. So having the ability to have first party, third party, OSS models available, providing all of the tooling for different levels of developers' capabilities will be really, really important. Making sure that, you know, really expert data scientists have tools that they can use, and then more uh, novice developers or enterprise developers can use things like uh, Vertex AI chat, or conversation and Vertex AI search to build applications really, really easily. Um, what else can I think of what's that's What's the bottom coming? line for the developer watching? He's going to be, he or she's thinking, what's in it for me? What's the bottom line? How would you like, bumper sticker this. The bottom line is that, you know, with the with our GA today, we've really enabled um, enterprise developers to build applications quickly and easily. They don't need to chunk the data, they don't need to worry about indices, they don't need to about worry about getting the data in. It's all there already and the tools are ready to go. Data as code, it's kind of like infrastructure as code, Rob. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think that will really accelerate a lot, it, not only just the devs themselves, but we talk about data developers and how they go through that and how they think about it, and I think this is the step forward that they need as well. I agree. I mean, you think the data developers are a legit new persona? And we've been saying on theCUBE that data as code is like infrastructure as code for DevOps. Yep. There's going to be an SRE for data out there. Yeah. I mean, I'm using your language, but yes. platform engineering now, what do you want to call it? I agree with you. I don't know what it's going to be called, but that function certainly <laughs> exists and is super critical. They all the same words, guardrails, <laughs> policy, yeah. 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 Um, automation. So a lot of the same things that's happened in security is going on with data. So yep. you know, we think of data IT markets emerging yep. in the cloud operator or architect. Mm -hmm. I mean, our operator and admins will be automated in a way, we, right. we believe. Yep. But the data has to be smarter, has to be intelligent, addressable, yes. horizontally scalable. And all in one place. And available to be domain specific at a moment's notice. Yep. And so you will see, you, you know, we announced a couple of uh, domain specific models as well with SecPOM and MedPOM. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we intend to enable partners to build those and to build, upon, build applications upon those. Well, I won't use the word lock-in anymore, that's for sure. As long as you guys don't use the word walled garden, because walled Not garden in our is vocabulary. bad. <laughs> Open garden is better. Yes. I like the garden. Our model uh, garden. Model garden is phenomenal. Yes. I like how you guys put that all in one place, curated to your own foundations with curated and third party. Yep. And I think open source is going to be interesting to watch the innovation come out of the developers. Exactly. What, I mean, small little models integrating with other models. Um, I don't think, the speed at which everything is moving, yeah. no one company can build it all, and so enabling others uh, and the innovation there is critical. Lisa, I feel grounded after this interview. <laughs> Thank you for awesome. um, coming on and sharing the data. We get that and share with the audience. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank Appreciate you for it. having me. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Rob Stretchy. We'll be right back after this short break. Okay. Oh.